All right, hello guys. In this video, we're gonna be talking about how really a big cooldown is gonna be on the way, and really that's how we're gonna close out the month of October. It appears it appears that the you know final last third of the month of October is gonna be well below normal for the central and eastern United States. But before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to check out the links in the description for our social medias. Now let's get right into things. We're looking at our teleconnections. This part confuses people, so I'm going to just briefly talk about it. This one's called the AO, or the Arctic Oscillation. You want this one to be negative for cold to be able to enter the eastern United States and the United States in general, whether it be west or east. So you, there's a black line in the middle that stays consistently straight, you can see. And if it's below that, it's in a negative phase. If it's above that, it's in a positive phase. And this is from the 17th of October, which is today, until the 2nd of November. And you can see it looks to be negative the whole time, but trending even further negative, meaning that we have a better and better chance of seeing below normal temperatures uh, as we move on towards early November. Here's your... NAO, which is called the North Atlantic Oscillation, and this one's quite similar, except it's more based on the eastern United States rather than just the entire United States. So when this one's negative, it really encourages below normal temperatures to be able to enter the eastern United States. And also, we see a tendency to see nor'easters as this is in a negative phase. And this one's also a very similar story. It's pretty negative right now, but trending even further negative. And then last but not least, we have our PNA, which is the Pacific North American Oscillation. This one for the eastern United States, you want to be in a positive phase above the black line because typically this is an indicator of above normal temperatures in the western United States. So when we see it in a negative phase, that means below normal temperatures in the western United States. And once it goes positive, that's an indicator that we see above normal temperatures in the western United States. And you can see we have uh, uh, around the 24th, this goes positive and stays positive through the end of October. So that's going to be a big switch up then as well. Let's break it down day by day on the GFS model here. And this is going to be your geo potential height. Really what this means, because this one also confuses people quite a bit. In the blue, all you need to know is there's a good chance at below normal temperatures. And in the reds or oranges, there's a good chance at above average temperatures. Also, storminess is has a tendency to occur within the bluer temperature or the bluer areas. And then in the red temperatures, we see more dry conditions. So it's pressure and temperatures. You can see this is today. We do have a little bit of that blue along the northeastern United States. That has to do with our nor'easter, and it is quite cold today with that cold front coming through. And also along the west coast of the United States up there in the northwest. In the central United States, we have positive geopotential height. Let's move on to the 18th, and you can see things shift just quite a bit. We see our nor'easter is moving out finally. Uh, it's in central Maine by this point, and it's moving in a northeasterly direction, and we have negative heights entering the western United States. And by the 20th, we see positive heights along the east coast. So you're probably wondering, well, you just said a big cooldown's coming, so why is it getting warmer? Well, in, if you watched my late October pattern, I said from the 15th until about the 20th, we look to be in a warmer phase, and that looks to be the truth here. Uh, it looks like we're most likely going to be in warmer than normal conditions from about the 17th to the 20th, which is only the next three days. So the next three days, things don't look to set in yet. But we do see a whole lot of blue behind it for the western and, and central United States, and it's heading in an easterly direction. So let's head to the 21st, and you can see it's shifted even further east. Those red uh, areas are expanding along the east, but let's move on to the 22nd, and now it's clear that things are moving easterly. This is a massive, massive trough for the central United States, only 100 hours out, so this is only five days out. We pretty, we're pretty certain that we're going to be dealing with a big-time trough in the central United States by this point. The European is showing it, GFS is showing it, Canadian model is showing it, teleconnections are showing it, and also notice we have warmer than normal conditions along the west coast of the United States. This is usually a big indicator that we're headed towards a positive PNA, and this is around the time frame that we're shifting into a positive PNA as well. Let's move on to the 24th, and you can see those blue areas have expanded for all of the north central United States and northeastern United States, and that red is expanding for the western coasts of North America, indicating that we have a positive PNA again, which encourages below normal temperatures for the eastern United States and at the same time, remember, our AO and our NAO are tanking by this point, heading more and more negative. 
Let's move on to the 25th, and you can see this big, big time trough is moving into the eastern United States and the Great Lakes. Uh, big time cold temperatures by this point. Going to be a huge shift in the pattern. 26th, you can see it's fully reached the east coast of the United States, and the eastern United States is going to be in a massive trough by this point, according to this model. The models are quite sure of it. Obviously, it's no guarantee. I can't guarantee you, like, oh, for sure this is going to happen, but I haven't seen this much confidence in the models, teleconnections, and all of those things so far this season. So I am more sure of this one than I have been uh, for any of these cooldowns so far this year. So I'm pretty certain this looks to be at least not above normal temperatures for the eastern United States. It looks quite chilly. And by the 27th, we still have below normal temperatures and blue colors there for the eastern United States. That ridge is moving a little bit further east. So let's take a look at the 27th and, well, it looks like the worm's headed east. So what's going on? The only area in the eastern United States that's cold is New England. And then we see cold temperatures re-entering Montana, Idaho, and Washington. Well, let's head on to the 29th, and you can see what's taking place here. Our PNA is trying to regain uh, its its positive look there, and then we see these cold temperatures diving towards the Great Lakes. We do have a brief warm up there for the west for the east coast of the United States, but as you can see by the 30th, we have another trough enter the northeastern United States, and by this point, we will have cold temperatures throughout the Mid Atlantic and Southeast as well. Even though there's a little bit of positive heights there, the trough is mostly in the eastern United States. So by this point, we will be dealing with below normal temperatures for the eastern United States as a whole. So you can tell that the trend here is kind of big time cooldowns as we close out October. Big time cooldowns for the eastern United States, but brief warm ups in between. So there is going to be some warm days in between these cooldowns, but it looks like overall from the 20th till the 31st of October... Pretty much uh, colder temperatures are going to be the trend for the central and eastern United States. And another thing that was interesting that I was looking at, and you guys can uh, try to look back and remember, at least the southeast and the mid-Atlantic, it's been five Halloweens in a row that there's been warm temperatures. Like, for most areas, 60s and 70s for Halloween. And on this model run, it looks like we could be in the 50s and 60s for the mid-Atlantic and southeast uh, it depends how south, obviously, because Florida probably won't be dealing with 60s. But a lot of the a lot of areas in the Mid Atlantic and South Central and Southeastern United States will be dealing with 60s and 50s. 50s mostly for the Mid Atlantic, and then the Northeast even colder than that, which is very a very interesting climate fact there that we've been dealing with warm Halloweens for the Southeastern United States and Mid Atlantic for five years in a row. The Northeast hasn't been that consistent with the warm temperatures, but definitely the mid-Atlantic and southeast. Now let's move on to your five-day temperature anomaly. So this is going to be your temperatures directly comparatively to normal for five-day periods. So this first one we're looking at is the October 17th, which is today, until the 22nd. So this is valid through Tuesday the 22nd. And you can see we are actually dealing with a little bit of below normal temperatures there for the east coast of the United States, really warm in the central, and then cold again for the northwest. I think the cold in the east is mostly for the later portions, uh, so most likely 21st and 22nd, but still. Uh, but big change up as we're at the 23rd through the 28th, you can see clearly dealing with far below average temperatures from Montana, the cent north central United States, down through the south central and eastern United States, with the exception of, obviously, the southwest. A little bit of New England, though. I think that won't be too consistent warmth. And then also Florida. And again, I don't think Florida will be consistent warmth, e warmth either. There will be cooldowns for both New England and Florida. Now, from the 28th through the 2nd of November, things get even colder. Again, those, those, the NAO and the AO are trending even further positive as we head towards early November. So it's only going to get colder if this verifies. Again, that's the big disclaimer, if it verifies, because things can definitely change with these teleconnections. But again, this is the strongest the strongest signal I've seen all year, and I'm quite confident that at least the period from about the 20th through the 25th will be cooldown, and we have a really good chance at 25th and beyond having a cooldown. And this is very, very similar to last year, except we had a big warm-up towards the very end of October. But right around the 15th of October, I remember it really took a change where we went from warm to cold in the east. And it looks quite similar, just a little bit later this time around. But really cold temperatures from Montana through 
the Dakotas, Minnesota, Great Lakes, and then even the southeast here. So very encouraging stuff as a lot of you have been dealing with above average temperatures. Big time cooldown on the way. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Share this with your family and friends on social medias, as always, whether you private message it to them or share it to your page. If you feel like they need to know this information, go ahead and give it a share. Let your friends and family know. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.